Hey guys, I'm going to just do a quick 10 things that you might not have known about Unity. Now, number one is the one, the feature that I quite like to use is that you've got the gizmos up at the top for moving, for moving, panning, rotating and scaling. Now, there's the other one, which is the, is the rec tool and it's often used for UIs to scale up UIs, but you can also use it as a dual functionality for 3D objects. So if you click on a 3D object, you get almost like a little miniature bounding box around and you can select on the very edges of the bounding and you can be able to scale in from the actual edges like you could in a 3D program if you were to select on the actual face of the object. Another one, another good one is if you've got a, a light probe group like this. As an example, you can use it for any gizmo that appears in the scene. And sometimes these get in the way, especially if you're doing your lighting and things like that, or it might be any particular item that you've got within your game. You can go to the top corner here and choose gizmos and you can show and hide different things that you might or not want. So you can go down to light probe group and untick it and you won't actually be able to see those. Just with the same with any of the gizmos and elements that you've got, whether it's lights, audio sources, and they'll have different little miniature images and you can choose to hide those if you don't want to have them visible in the editor. Number three is, especially when you're in the editor, you have some quick selections up at the top so you can move to 2D. You can choose to show the lighting in your scene if it's toggled on. You can choose to turn audio entirely off for the entire scene or you can choose to toggle off the skybox and other effects if it includes image effects. So this can be something that you can do to test without having you to go into the game view to have a look. You can choose to have lighting on or off takeoff effects and you can see it as it's just defaultly lit. You can put the lighting back on and the effects and they'll be fine for the scene. It's a good way to get a ground of testing different things and being able to see things without some of the other things getting in the way if you've put a lot of post-processing on. Another one is looking at the rendering modes. We've got a lot of rendering modes that you might not have used before. And if you click at the top where it not often says shaded, you can choose a lot of different rendering modes and they're good for debugging and things like that. You can check out wireframes so you can have a look around your scene and you can see the wireframe that often you would see in a 3D program. You can see a shaded wireframe so you can still see everything as it is now. You can see a lot of different things for miscellaneous things. You can see the text quality emit maps. You can see alpha channels, the, the sh shadow cascades. If you've got any deferred thing, you can see the things for global illumination. And if we had any light maps baked out, we could actually see the resolution of the little um, texels that we've got there. And we can go through various different um, UV charts and things to be able to see your emissive albedo and all the different channels that we might have. You can take a look at the different uh, the stats window which is often a really good one to check out what currently your FPS is sitting at. All the tries and draw calls that are currently when you're looking directly with your camera to anything in the scene and you can check out to see if something's really dipping performance in one area you can take a look at that area see what is really high it might be a triangle count which hits a really high number or you might get an awful lot of shadow castle draw calls and you can choose to optimize that where available and what goes hand in that is if you go to window and then you go to profiler that can also do the job similar with this it's more of an advanced way and gives you some ad more advanced debugging and will allow you to look at the GPU, CPU, memory, different audio and physics to see what might be bogging down your game at any one time. So you can press play and you can choose to choose any of these settings and just scrub through and it will give you a low down. If I press, you can now see that I can look at CPU and I can see that the, and you can say that the the initial thing for wait for target FPS is the first thing that I see here, which is 90% because I've got the frames capped. Um, because if I un uncap the frames, we'd probably go all the way to, I don't know, infinity because it's not very much going on in the scene. And I'll give you the example of exactly what I mean. Another one that we can mention is if we go edit project settings and we go to quality, on this side you will see something called um, vsync count. And vsync count is what it will... Um, what we often see we see vsync within games when you want to cap it to say the refresh rate of your screen which might be 60 and you can choose every v blank or every sec second b v blank which would be 30 60 and then don't actually cap the frames at all so if i un untick that and say don't sync and now i'll play again then now in this instance you can see that the fps in some cases went all the way to sort of over a thousand fps and things like that and you can see that the camera renders the biggest thing which is taking up um, the most actual 
performance. And the next one I'm going to say is while we're on the still the same, the quality settings, you can actually delete different levels of quality. So we say we didn't want fastest anymore. We didn't want simple. Uh, we didn't want beautiful and we want to keep these. So what can we do? We can make our own presets. So you can actually make a new name and call this low and you can have this one as ultra and then you could have your middle one as essentially medium and that would translate to the things that you've got in your little output menu when you build your game or in your options menu you can see that now we've got different levels that we've customized you can delete and edit as appropriate and you can just rename them so you can actually save them as you want so you don't have to have the fast fastest and things has unity by default the next tip that i'm going to mention is in project settings and you go to player you can you have a lot of different options here in your player settings you can choose to rename your company uh, choose the actual name of your project you can set the default icon which is the thing that would appear down at the bottom in your taskbar you can change the cursor if you really want you can go to resolution and presentation and you can choose whether you want to have have the little resolu the resolution dialogue which pops out when you start a unity application where you can often choose the quality and the resolution you can choose to disable it if you don't want to do it and you can set yourself some splash images and things like that and you can set the icons here for the actual the build that builds out and the next one i'm going to show is the ability to you can sort of tag out objects with something and this is something that people don't always know if you click on any sort of 3d object that you might have and you go towards the inspector on this top left of the inspector you can click on the little drop down and you can select an icon to give any particular thing so if i choose orange you can see that it now has an orange the name on it if i rename the if I change the name to I am a cube, you can see that it's orange and no matter where I went, when I zoom out, you can see that it's marked and it can be a good way to mark different areas. So you might give everything a color when maybe they're a wall and interactable objects or something like that, where you can just give it a, a brief description of, you know, what it might be. So you can just glance at your scene and go, oh, all this green stuff is what things I'm going to interact with. All the red stuff is all the collisions where I'm not going to be able to go to this area. And you can easily see what bits you might have done. And it's a good way just to mark off areas and parts of your game just to have things to be able to manage. And let's, let's just say, for instance, you've got yourself a camera that you've just created and you don't like where that camera's positioned and instead of having to, you know, wiggle about and have to try and decide where you want to put it, you can sort of go anywhere in your scene and, and as long as you're in your scene view, we'll scale around and maybe we want our camera to be positioned here. In the game view, you can see that it's looking at our cube, weirdly. If we go and have the camera selected, go game object and we go align to view it will actually align it to where our current scene um, actual sort of inspector camera is looking and you can see from the game view we're looking in that same position so that's a really nice way to sort of get a cinematic look without you having to you know drag the camera around the scene and awkwardly have to place it in weird places so these were my sort of top 10 tips and i hope these helped you out to sort of get a little bit of extra usability out of unity so thanks very much for watching don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.